Beit Sherim is an ancient cemetery located within Galilee. Very close by is a natural cave. It had apparently fallen into disuse at the end of the 4th century and filled up partially with four or five feet of clay-like silt. In 1956, a bulldozer was taken in to clear the rubble, but what it would uncover can be seen as an enormous upart, an out-of-place artifact. It turned out to be a large ancient rectangular slab made from an unknown material. Because of its size, measuring 6.5 by 11 feet long, 18 inches thick and weighing in at over 9 tons, it was not surprisingly left where it lay. With a perfectly level surface, its origins were a mystery, yet alas, at the time, not a pressing one. However, in 1963, members of a joint expedition of the Corning Museum of Glass and the University of Missouri would bring to light a curious reality. While surveying the region for possible remains of ancient glass factories, someone suggested that the Bet Sharim slab might have been made of glass. A suggestion initially perceived as a joke. Amazingly, chemical analysis was indeed carried out, confirming that this enormous and extremely ancient slab was indeed made of glass. It is therefore believed that the Bet Sharim slab is a huge piece of first stage glass meant to have been broken up and fashioned into objects somewhere else that for some reason was abandoned right where it was made. In conclusion, several factors surrounding the existence of the slab are currently unexplainable. According to mainstream views surrounding the evolution of glassmaking, the production of such an enormous base material would have been simply impossible, requiring over 12 tons of raw materials, over 20 tons of furnace fuel, the maintaining of a temperature of over 1100 degrees centigrade for no less than five continuous days, finally producing a nine-ton slab of perfectly level, perfectly rectangular glass, clearly demonstrates the requirement of a highly advanced refinery with highly advanced technologies harnessed by a past civilization. Additionally, at the time of its discovery, only two other pieces of glass have ever been created that are larger. Both rest within the enormous telescopic mirrors of machines developed within the past century. It seems clear to us that the Beth Sharim slab is one of those rare gems that clearly demonstrates the past existence of a highly advanced, highly capable ancient civilization that once lived and was unfortunately lost here on Earth. The Lady of Elche, a limestone bust that was first discovered in 1897. It was found at an archaeological site on a private estate, two kilometers south of Elche within Spain. Currently exhibited at the National Archaeological Museum in Madrid, the artistic influences involved in creating her are a heavily debated topic. This undoubtedly due to her unusual appearance and the fact that no one seems to be able to pinpoint her origins. According to the Encyclopedia of Religion, the Lady of Elche is believed to have a direct association with Tanit, the goddess of Carthage, who was once worshipped by the Punic Iberians. Though at best, this could be perceived as a guess, based on vague similarity. Clearly, the most striking and intriguing detail surrounding the Lady of Elche is her mysterious and possibly advanced technological appendages. Positioned around her head and flowing down the bust, the original function for these strange decorations is unknown. The current academically accepted view is that the originally polychromed bust is thought to have represented a woman wearing a complex headdress, while some scholars suggest that the sculpture is Iberian and associated with Tanit, the goddess of Carthage, Others have proposed the work reflects a long-lost Atlantean goddess. The unusual features of the sculpture, such as the quietly kept detail that she had an elongated head, has led many independent researchers to suspect the spools were not part of a unique headdress, but was a type of lost technology, reflecting the highly advanced nature of the lost and forgotten Atlantean civilization. Art historian John F. Moffat, along with most of academia, agree that the shape of the lady's eyes, nose, and other features were too delicate to have been carved in pre-Christian Spain. Therefore, predictably, 
Instead of suspecting that an unknown, highly advanced civilization could have possibly created it, many academics have simply concluded it to be an elaborate hoax, regardless of the compelling evidence upon the statue which displays its true antiquity. And also of the fact that in 1997, the mayor of Elche fought to have the bust of the Lady of Elche returned from the National Archaeological Museum of Spain in Madrid to the city of Elche to be on display during celebrations of the city's 2000th year. It was to be a special exhibit, but the petition to have the bust returned was denied. The director of Elche's archaeological museum, Rafael Ramos, argued that it was preposterous to say that the statue could not survive the journey, noting that more delicate pieces are transported around the world regularly. Do these sound like the actions of a group of people who suspect the artifact to be a fake? Or does it sound more like the actions of a group of conspiring individuals with an aim of retaining a valuable, yet largely unknown relic? Is the statue of the Lady of Elche a long-lost Atlantean bust? Or maybe a leader of a group of beings whom once visited Earth? Questions surrounding the Lady of Elche largely remain unanswered. How did she end up in a farmer's field in Spain? The disputes and specialist theories surrounding the Lady of Elche clearly illustrate the secret importance of the bust. Just who was the Lady of Elche? An ancient queen? Perhaps an ancient alien? When a piece is clearly treasured by the same group who contest it as a fake, we always find such objects highly compelling. Sometimes an artifact will be discovered which challenges our entire understandings of the world around us. We are confronted with things that, according to our worldview, shouldn't exist. And in 1991, researchers performing geomineralogical studies along several Russian rivers would make such a discovery. Known as the Ural Mountains, it is a notoriously strange, cold, and incredibly lonely slice of the Russian landscape. Accounts of snow yetis and terrifying creatures have plagued the mountain ranges for decades, even including a reported attack by such a creature within Dyatlov Pass. The Ural Mountains is clearly one of the weirdest and most isolated places on Earth, and it seems it has also been the resting place for a series of several thousand tiny coil-shaped artifacts, ancient nanotechnology of an unknown and quite possibly alien origin. The larger artifacts made from copper, while the smaller ones from tungsten. What is clearly the most astonishing thing regarding these tiny ancient relics is their size, some of the exhibits being only 2.4 macrons long, or around one ten thousandth of an inch. Seeing as though the average human hair is about 100 microns, it's safe to assume that these microscopic objects were not constructed by our primitive ancestors for to create such intriguing objects would have required a knowledge and an application of sophisticated nanotechnologies. Not only do they exhibit characteristics reminiscent of components used within our own modern nanotechnologies, the nanocoils also exhibit golden ratio proportions, a trait which could only be present if intelligently designed by mathematically wise beings. Some skeptics to their true history have predictably attempted to speculate that the apparently alien objects were simply fragments of debris from the nearby rocket test facility, but a report from the Moscow Institute of Technology concluded that their vast age was enough to dismiss this as a possibility. The conclusive figure acquired from this official dating put their initial creation to around 300,000 years ago. Studies performed by facilities in Helsinki, Moscow, and St. Petersburg also backed up the claims that the coil-shaped objects were manufactured in the very distant past, stating that they predate modern history by some orders of magnitude. Unfortunately, as with so many items we cover, since the nanospirals principal investigator Dr. Johannes Fieback died in 1999, the research has been halted. What's more, Predictably, the current whereabouts of all of these ancient nano-artifacts is unfortunately unknown. It's fair to say, however, 
that the Ural Mountains still possess some of these curious and very ancient objects, but judging by their size, they won't be very easy to find. The Oklahoma newspaper, The Oklahoman, would publish a story on June 28, 1969, titled It's a Cracked Puzzle. Subsequently pulled from their archives, some astute researchers, however, have managed to track down this amazing article, detailing an impossible discovery. It pertains to the excavation of an ancient floor, a tiled area which covered a truly vast distance, as if it was once the highly finished floor of an enormous structure. What is astonishing regarding this floor, however, is the date that countless specialists have concluded upon. The age of these tiles is simply baffling. According to the modern dating techniques used, this floor was laid well over 200,000 years ago, using a tiling mortar containing currently unknown elements. Delbert Smith, president of the Oklahoma Seismograph Company, and past president of the Oklahoma City Geophysical Society accompanied Derwood Pate, an independent petroleum geologist, in an exploration of the site. They finished their studies by stating that they were both very satisfied that it is not a natural earth formation and that it is, indeed, man-made. Smith and Pate even took core samples to make a microscopic investigation of the material makeup. The discovery of two holes through the rock strata heightened interests, and when measurements revealed the two holes to be exactly 16 and a half feet apart, or precisely one rod, they were convinced it was a deliberate artificial placement. The stone tiles were found to have been made from Permian limestone, laced with quartz grains. Geologists who focused their attention on the unusual flooring were all at a loss to explain the origin of the formation. John M. Ware, an Oklahoma City geologist, said, It simply cannot be explained within the field of geology. We need an archaeologist to give a final opinion. However, its age and origin may remain a mystery unless an archaeologist can be persuaded to take on the project soon. Just 20 days after these astonishing finds and subsequent realizations, construction workers moved in on the area, quickly demolishing the enormously ancient and vastly important floor building a foodstuffs warehouse in its place. Pate said that the formation, 100 feet by 60 feet in area, was rapidly becoming a tourist attraction. People began flocking there and taking pieces of the rock away, he said. Just who built this ancient floor? Why did they build it? And was it really over 200,000 years old? Judging by the way this discovery was buried, it is certainly a possibility. Antarctica one of the world's most mysterious continents, home to one of the largest and driest deserts on the planet, covering an area of around five and a half million square miles. If there was anywhere on Earth where crashed, preserved, ancient alien technologies could still be found, it would be here. An untouched landscape, which may in all possibility be the final resting place as of yet unretrieved relics which may have been stranded there to this day. The deep sea which surrounds Antarctica, for example, are some of the most difficult and inhospitable environments to explore anywhere. Far away from the modern world, deep within the frigid, pitch-black waters of this massive chunk of ice, where our next discovery was miraculously made. An out-of-place artifact which is still resting at the bottom of this sea. Known as the Eltanen Antenna, if it wasn't for the brute strength of the nearly 2,000-ton ice-breaking vessel known as the Eltanen, we may never have found it. Initially a U.S. Navy cargo-carrying icebreaker, in 1962 she was reclassified as an oceanographic research ship and became the world's first dedicated Antarctic research vessel. On the 29th of August, 1964, while collecting sample cores and photographing the seabed west of Cape Horn, the Altanen took the first known photograph of the antenna at a depth of nearly 4,000 meters. The first public mention of the unusual object would not surface for several months. A news item which appeared in the New Zealand Herald on 5 December 1964, under the heading, Puzzle Picture from the Seabed, would briefly disclose the discovery Yet any further exploratory missions, if indeed there has been any, have been operating in secret. 
similar to the Baltic Sea anomaly, yet positioned at a far deeper depth, in an extremely remote, cold, and lonely part of our world, it too shows all the hallmarks of an artificially created object. The question is, what could it be? And more importantly, what was or is its function? In 1968, author Brad Steiger wrote an article for Saga magazine in which he claimed that the Altanen had in fact photographed, quote, an astonishing piece of machinery, very much like the cross between a TV antenna and a telemetry antenna, end quote. It is interesting to note that the Black Knight satellite, an anomalous object which is in a polar orbit, has been declared by numerous investigators throughout history as an artificial alien satellite. And with what appears to be an enormous alien antenna resting on the Antarctic seafloor, is it possible that the two are connected? Or possibly in communication with each other? In 2003, Tom DeMary, a researcher in underwater acoustics, contacted oceanographer A.F. Amos, a member of the Altanen's crew in the 1960s, in an effort to debunk any theory involving artificial design. In turn, Amos referred to Mary to the 1971 book The Face of the Deep by Bruce C. Heason and Charles D. Hollister. It seems Hollister had already attempted to identify the mysterious object as a carnivorous sea sponge. However, these attempts to discredit any unusual hypothesis was solely based on the same photographs we are privileged to. Further photographic exploration of the object, if undertaken, has been done in complete isolation from the public. What is the Altanen antenna? A mere sea sponge? An actual alien antenna? Whatever it is, it seems certain fields of study would like you to believe it's natural. Regardless of whether confirmation of such claims was made, we always find this highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, Please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you.